On today's show, the Atlanta Hawks win the NBA draft lottery. What the number one pick means to Atlanta, which prospects make the most sense for the Hawks, what trading the pick possibly looks like, and how this pick impacts the futures of both Trey Young and DeJounte Murray. It's all coming up on today's Locked on NBA. You are Locked on NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked On NBA, the biggest stories with the local experts. I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, also host of Locked On Rockets right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and so much more. And all you have to do is wager $5. Right now you can head over to FanDuel.com and take a look at the outright betting favorites for the title this NBA season. The Boston Celtics minus 140 to win it all. The Denver Nuggets plus plus three. 370 behind them and then the Minnesota Timberwolves distant third place favorites at plus 800 so for all those odds and so much more visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count fanduel America's number one sports book Joining us now is the host of Locked On Hawks, Brad Roland. You can track down wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. Just search Locked On Hawks. Here is the Atlanta Hawks received the number one pick from the NBA Draft Lottery, jumping up from the 10th spot in the lottery order, winning the NBA Draft Lottery for the first time in team history. Their first number one pick since 1975, where they drafted David Thompson, who never even played for Atlanta. So, Right now, Brad, the big question for, for Hawks fans everywhere, right, is, is does Atlanta keep the pick or do they trade the pick? So let's start with the idea of just keeping this pick, right, looking at some of the talent in this draft. There's no consensus number one guy this year, so that's dilemma number one. But a couple of the names at the top of the draft, guys like Alex Saar, Donovan Klingon. Problem is, you know, they're, they're bigs. Atlanta has Clint Capella. They've got Anyeka Kongwu. Could we see them add yet another big if they're just going like best player available or, or does one of the other top prospects make a little bit more sense? I think that in general, in general with this pick and number one overall in any class, really, you kind of take the best player available. Uh, I think fit, fit very, very rarely would matter at this kind of asset level. Um, I think the only thing for me and I think for the Hawks probably is that they probably wouldn't take a small guard at number one, no matter if that guy was up there because of just what they have on the roster. But having guys like Capella and Kong Wu, it's nice to have those guys, but they're not going to disqualify you from taking the best player available. So you mentioned there's no consensus number one. That's definitely the case. I think they're the closest thing to a guy who was a consensus top three guy probably in the class is Alex Saar, who you mentioned. I think he's probably, if you were to put together a front runner list he would be near the top of it without the hawks saying that just kind of just the, the industry consensus on that and he is a combo big of nothing else so it wouldn't stop them for sure i think it would certainly create some interesting uh discussion points about the future of their roster but that honestly is the case no matter where the hawks are picking because this team as you mentioned was not supposed to be here like this is a very unexpected outcome and they have uh, kind of the world as their oyster right now you talk about interesting discussion points for this Hawks team, right? This Hawks team could go in any number of directions this offseason, right? You try to retool and, and you know, put the right pieces around DeJounte and, and, and Trey Young. Maybe that's not the case. Maybe one of them gets dealt this offseason. How does getting the number one pick in this year's draft kind of change the available pathways moving forward for this team? Yeah, I think it doesn't change the pathways. I, there's been this immediate reaction, like, could this – increase the chances of maybe a, a more drastic trade, like something to send Trey Young out, for instance. I think it's almost the opposite of that, if I had to guess. And it gets, we're really early here. The intel's not really started to set in yet. But I think it's actually easier to go ahead and sell Trey and kind of keep that going with this premium asset that you're bringing in. And this does not change the fact that the Hawks have some roster challenges. Um, I actually asked that to Landry Fields on a, on, a, on a Zoom earlier today about that, like kind of, you know, this you already have some decisions to make what happens now of course he gave a very diplomatic answer no specifics given that's kind of the nature of the beast right now but they already have big decisions both in the backcourt with Dejounte and Trey at center who with with Akongwu and Capella they don't have a other than Jalen Johnson they don't have a guy beyond the point guard position with Trey and Dejounte that's a certified building block at this point in time and that kind of gives you some freedom it also gives you some uncertainty because they have a bunch of guys who are making reasonable money that they kind of have to decide on. There's luxury tax stuff. The uh, it's definitely wide open, but I, I personally think from what I can glean so far, 
it might even make it less likely that they would make a more drastic move because now they kind of get that asset given to them uh, via the luck of the lottery. But does that, uh, so you talk about them maybe being less likely to make a drastic move. Do you mean a drastic move in the sense of, of like a, like a Trey or DeJounte trade? Because again, that's kind of been so much of the buzz lately is can, can those two guys coexist and, or is one of them just bound to be on the way out as early as this off season? I think that the only drastic move would be a Trey Young trade. I think a DeJounte Murray trade would be a significant move, but it wouldn't be shocking or ultra. Look, they, they flirted with DeJounte trades for six, seven weeks pretty openly. They were pretty close a few times to trading him in January, February. That was reported. I heard the same thing. Like they got down the road on those deals to the point where it should surprise no one if they trade DeJounte Murray this offseason. I'm not saying they're going to, but that would be a less surprising, less shocking less aggressive move i think the only way that would like really be a, a franchise changer would be to trade trey young who's been their guy since he dropped since he was drafted in 2018 um i think jalen johnson is maybe the guy who is least likely to be traded on the whole roster even ahead of trey at this point they like jalen johnson quite a bit he's a future building block for them but um i still believe that murray is the most likely guy of those kind of premium guys to be traded this this summer this doesn't really change that with the number one overall pick now in tow and we've seen teams kind of do this in the past, right? Where you, you've got your cornerstone in Trey Young. How do you put the right pieces around them? Could we see this be kind of almost the beginnings, you know, potentially, you know, obviously with maybe even a DeJounte Murray trade further down the line. Could we see this as more of like a soft reset for the Atlanta Hawks, right? Bringing in a number one overall pick. You've got Jalen Johnson. Maybe you trade DeJounte Murray for some other young kind of blue chip prospects or talent. And then without fully tearing things down to the studs and then rebuilding from the bottom, you kind of do a soft reset. And in and, and your opinion, do you think Quinn Snyder is kind of up for that task of tearing a team down and building it back up, even if you don't go all the way down to nothing, you know, including a Trey Young trade, obviously? Yeah, I suppose it could be. But at the same time, maybe you would argue that the reason to do a full rebuild like that is to give them one overall pick and you just got it. You know, it's one of those things where plus the Hawks um, infamously traded three or four years of their draft for DeJounte Murray. So they don't have the future war trust. And, you know, part of the reason to rebuild as we both covered teams that have done this is to have your own picks as part of the calculus and they don't have their own picks. So at least they don't have control of their own picks. So they have to be pretty aggressive there to kind of do a more thorough rebuild. I do think that, that it's probably time for something of an overhaul to the roster. Um, you can do that without trading Trey Young. You, you can do that with DeJounte. You can do that with DeAndre Hunter being traded or Clint Capella being traded, using this number one overall pick to kind of reset your timeline. But I think locally, both with Quinn Snyder, who you mentioned, also with ownership, they've not really shown any appetite that I can glean to take a step back, at least willingly. Now, this year they were they took one on accident. They they, they finished, you know, they finished 10th, they lost in the first round of the play-in. That's not where they wanted to be. Uh it worked out for them very well in this large situation, but I think that there's not really that that desire to, or at least willingness even to kind of take that step back on purpose. And I think this might even speed that up again, because, you know, you could, you could again say that they won the lottery this time. We don't have to rebuild now. We kind of use this, use this to move forward and try to win again in the, in the immediate future. Throughout this segment, we've kind of talked about different, you know, whether they keep the pick, trade the pick, but just in your eyes as it stands right now, now this could look like any number of the permutations that we've gone over, right? Maybe it includes DeJounte. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's the pick by itself, just some salary filler. We know the way the NBA landscape works at the drop of a hat you know, a bunch of big name players could suddenly become available. The Phoenix Suns look like there's, uh, you know, a, a murky situation going on over there with some of their star players. We never know who's going to become available, but in your eyes, which potential star players that could be available this offseason or, or big swing type players could be available to the Hawks if they were to pit, put that number one pick on the table and try and make a run at bringing in some win now talent to help Trey and DeJounte or, or just Trey, I guess. Yeah, it's really the big question because, you know, it's so early in the process, you know, you know, most teams are not at, sort of been eliminated at this point from the playoffs, but still the whole like cycle of who's actually going to be available in trade is like, we're not quite there yet. You know, I'm sure we've all, we're all speculating on this and also not to be negative from this perspective, but the number one pick this year is not necessarily viewed as the same caliber of asset that it normally would be. Now this is obviously not a, not, not a Zion or a Wemby draft, but not even like the next tier below that. So I am still curious to see what kind of market value that pick would even have. Because if you're the Hawks, I think there's an, a real argument that if you can get what I would describe as like a normal standard package offered to you for them on overall pick, you probably have to think about taking it, whether it's a future future facing package or a player package. But if it's not, if you're selling the number one pick for like number five pick overall value, is there really a reason to do that? Maybe not. I mean, you probably hear guys like Lori Markinen, like those guys who are like near the ends that, who haven't signed extensions yet. It's probably not going to happen, though. I, I think that realistically, if they were to do a pick 
trade. It would probably be for a combination of assets. It's not going to be for that one shining light of a player. I, I already got asked today, as you might imagine, that uh, is, is Jalen Brown a topic? Is Jalen Brown an option? It's like, well, they're still playing, number one. He's also making like $50 million a year and all these complications. So it's that it's it's tis the season for madness, but I think that they should at least take calls. Landry Fields got asked that today, and he basically said, we're not thinking about that right now. It wasn't a no, though. It was not a no, we're not taking calls. It was like, we're not quite there. So it's going to be uh, every rumor imagine, I'd imagine in the next six weeks. What will the Atlanta Hawks ultimately do with the number one overall pick? Will they keep it and draft another young prospect or will they trade the pick? You're going to have us covered for all that and so much more over at Locked on Hawks. Brad, thanks for stopping by Locked on NBA with me. Thanks for having me.